Sports with Scott Cohen. Weather with Brian Lapis and the 22 News Storm Team. This is the WHMP Morning News with Bob Flaherty and Denise Fazella. Chris Collins sitting in for Bob Flaherty today. A chance to talk about local government. We've been talking a lot about town meeting season and election season, and there is a competitive race in the town of Deerfield for a three-year seat on the select board. Uh, incumbent Chair Carolyn Shores Ness is being challenged by my guest at this time. He is Eric Brown. He's a political newcomer to Deerfield, but he's been in town for a while. And this is his first chance to be interviewed uh, live on the radio. Eric, I appreciate you making the time. I know you have a very busy schedule, but I appreciate you coming on. Uh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it as well. Now, I wanted to give you an opportunity to be on the air because, I mean, I don't know who you are. I, I, I know a little bit about the, the political players in the area, but I've seen a lot of Eric Brown signs around. Who is Eric Brown? Why do you want to be a selectman? Well, um, you know, and I appreciate that uh, you, you mentioned that you don't know who I am. So I, I think there's a lot of people out there saying that no one knows who I am, but obviously uh, quite a few people do. But for those that don't, um, you know, my wife and I and my family moved here six years ago. Uh, my background is in heavy civil construction. Um, and when I say heavy civil construction, I mean, you know, projects ranging from $5 million to $350 million in size. Uh, worked my way up from a laborer to a project engineer to a um, project manager on those said jobs. And um, one of the reasons, you know, I wanted to get involved in this uh, election season is, you know, years ago when I moved in, after a little while, people had mentioned, oh, you might be good on the select board. And of course, I didn't think I'd been in town long enough. But recently, um, you know, I, I felt like we've got a lot of infrastructure projects going on, uh, a lot of things, uh, you know, construction related and uh, managerial related that I think I would have a, a lot of experience to bring to the table, although from the private sector, um, bring it to the public sector. And, and, and uh, just, just for reference, I think a lot of people say there's a lot of difference between public and private. Well, every job I ever worked on was a public job hired out to a private contractor, right? And which is exactly what Deerfield's looking to do with a lot of these projects, the, the sewer, the streetscapes you know, the library expansion. So, um, you know, I have, um, I have a specific knack for, you know, taking a project, cradle the grave, uh, and completing it on time and in, in uh, well, usually under budget. So, um, so again, I, I think uh, that that's what we tempted me to, to, to get involved. I didn't see um, any other, you know, candidates really, we were coming to the forefront at the time. So, you know, it's always good to have a, it's always good to have a selection when, when there is an election, right? So, uh, one thing my wife tells me, it's nice that uh, Deerfield has a choice between two, you know, good candidates. So, I agree. And I, I spoke to you the other night, and I was I was very impressed to, to hear, number one, that you actually have a, a motivation for running. Because one of the things that you hear, and, you know, sight unseen, and when there's a vacuum, it gets filled, is that this isn't so much, this guy doesn't want to be selected, he just wants to be Carolyn. But you have a lot of respect for your opponent, and you really think you can make the town better. Well, yeah, I, I think... Um, you know, obviously, Karen's got a lot of experience. And, and I'm going to say this about everybody in any committee in Deerfield. They're not doing this because, you know, they're getting something, you know, um, some major benefit out of it other than, you know, trying to improve our town. I mean, people that run for these types of offices in local government, I would say majority, I would say not all, in my opinion, they're doing it because they feel they have something to offer. It's not as much as even of a want as a, you know, I don't want to say obligation, but they feel like they have a talent they need to share with the, with the public. And, and that's, that's, that's what charity is all about in, in, in reality, um, is, 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 is doing that type of work and taking up that torch. So, you know, and, and that was one other thing that, um, you know, someone had said to me is, you know, we'd really like you to get involved in, in the town. And, you know, I saw this opportunity and thought it'd be a good fit for me again, just because of my management background. Um, but, you know, we need more people from my, my era, my, my generation to get involved because, you know, people cycle through government. Let's just face it. In, in reality, we're not going to be around forever, and more people need to come through and do this type of work. So I would like to see, you know, younger people get involved right from the beginning if they could. Eric Brown joining me on the Newsmakers line. He's a candidate for Deerfield Select Board. The election is May 7th. Let's get into a couple of specific issues. The, the hot topic right now in Deerfield seems to be marijuana, specifically whether the town should be in the pop business. There's a, a movement to try and do a marijuana prohibition which is going to be actually on the town meeting warrant. Where do you stand on this issue? Should Deerfield be in the pot business? Um, you know, here's my position on a lot of positions. I have my own, you know, thoughts, and I, I personally don't, don't, you know, I voted no for legalizing pot. I'll, I'll tell you right there. But that being said, that doesn't mean that everyone else, you know, voted the same way I voted. They didn't. So, sure, we can get into it as long as the town makes that conscious decision, you know. 
So I appreciate having the right to, to vote on it. And, um, you know, I think, you know, in reality, the, the town should make that decision as a, as a unit, um, regardless of who we think might come out to the polls, of course. Um, let's just, I'd like to put this into perspective. I know, I know there's a lot of contention about being able to vote for the prohibition or not vote for the prohibition. Um, you know, our, our town has a tendency when there's obviously even like right now with this election, when there's something going on, they come out. And, and I hate to say it, but if someone doesn't come out, um, you know, usually it wasn't that, you know, major to them. So I think, I think the people that it's important to are going to come out to vote for that. So long story short, you know, I think the town should decide. And if the town decides to do something different than what I think, you know, majority rules, that's our system. Would you be in favor of putting on the ballot? Your opponent voted against putting on the ballot. Would you have voted in favor of that? I, I would have put it on the ballot. I, I, I would have. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that they didn't have uh, valid reasons, you know, for their thought process, but, in, in, you know, because I look at, always look at both sides of the argument, but I would have tended to the other side that I would have given everyone the opportunity. Um, I think if it passed the first time and, and you know, uh, as people have said, a lot of people change their minds sometimes. Some people that voted against it are now voting for it. Some people that voted for it may vote against it. So you never know what's going to change over the course of two years. So, um, you know, that's a long time. You mentioned that people don't often get involved unless it directly affects them or they, they tend to back off. One of the issues that affects everybody is taxes. You know, people feel like taxes are too high, tax rates are too high. The overwhelming amount of Deerfield's taxes come from residential property owners. What are your thoughts on, is there a way to lower taxes and lower the burden on people? Well, you know, taxes are taxes. We're always going to have to pay, and we all know that. Um, is there a way to do it? Sure. You know, you, you know, you, uh, it's not just going to come from one person or three people. It's going to come from a group of people working together. But uh, the easiest way to lower your taxes is to increase your tax base, right? I mean, you know, you have more area to distribute your costs. Um, operating costs are operating costs, whether you have, you know, two houses, well, two houses in town or 200 houses in town. It's a little extreme, but you think you get where I'm going. So if we can, you know, beneficially expand our residential areas and, you know, growth that they're in and also some of our um, industrial areas, you know, development along five and 10, if we can, if we can move forward with that, with, with getting some, you know, new, newer businesses in, that's just going to increase our tax base without increasing, you know, burden, particularly if you're bringing in businesses, um, you know, they, they don't, necessarily populate our schools for sure but they do pay local in, uh, local taxes and sewer bills and you know that's going to help us out uh you mentioned schools and i think that this is a pretty important topic because the number one issue i think that people are concerned about is schools if you having a good schools you can't really bring in residential oh, people and, and and i know that you've got kids in the schools talk about that a little bit yeah, well, that's the first thing we looked at when we moved here. Actually, when we moved here, our house was the second thing my wife was looking at, I'm sure, because it was falling down. But we were moving here because the schools were so good. It, you know, my, my in-laws were both um, educators in the New York State school system. The first thing my father-in-law did was when he when he found out where we were looking is he pulled up the red, you know, he pulled up all the information that he could find on the Deerfield in the uh, Frontier School System. And they are pretty top-notch, and that is a huge reason. We moved up and down the East Coast, and we, we did a lot of selling and buying. And every time we looked to... Uh, Move into an area. We wanted to make sure the school system was good because it would facilitate us selling our house uh, when we had to move the next time. So um, you know that's a uh, you know I you know just you know again like you said I have four kids in the schools. I think that's uh, something we have to make sure we maintain. One of the reasons I pushed so hard to have you on, Eric, is because there have been people that have been speculating that this isn't so much an, an effort to elect Eric Brown as it is an effort to defeat defeat Carolyn Ness. And there are people that have said that well, you know, this guy is being pushed by people who aren't big fans of Carolyn to try and get her out. But I was impressed with your response to that when you said, that, you know, you plan to be an independent voice. You're not running for anybody. You're running in favor or trying to make the town a better place. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so I'm actually, you asked me if I was registered uh, Republican or Democrat, but I'm actually registered independent. Um, and I've always done that. I'm, I'm my own person. Um, my background is in engineering. Uh, I'm a professional, licensed professional engineer in three states, not Massachusetts. I never got my reciprocity here, but um, I could if I'd wanted to. Uh, but but we're, we're logical people. Like We look at both sides of the argument, and then we make what we think is a conscious decision based on the pros and cons. Um, and and it sort of political background is, is not what we're about. So it may seem a little rigid, but it's, it's sort of the way it is. Um, uh, and, and again, that, as far as other people pushing me into this, I actually thought about it years ago, but I didn't think I had the background in the town or, or, or even the right at that point in time. I hadn't been here long enough to, to, to try to step into something like that. But this is definitely me, and I'm definitely my own person. And, and I've made that very, you know, there's a lot of contention with some of the folks that are backing me. But, the, you know, there's contention 
between people that are backing me. So I've got people on both sides of the aisle that have, that have said they, you know, they'd like to see me in there. And, and I've made it very clear to them that, you know, we're going to agree to disagree on some topics, and we're going to agree on some topics. And in the end, we're still going to be neighbors. And if you need a hand with something, I'll come over and help you mow your yard or something. You know, it's just we have to remember that this isn't about, you know, I'm for or against. This is about what's best for the town and what we what we can bring to the table and offer to the town with our with our time and talent.